All right, everyone, welcome to the afternoon portion of the program. Um, we're switching gears a little bit, moving from uh, practice presentations that I think is just thought like that the connection. You know, we hope and believe the lessons will be applicable uh, to everyone. Um, starting us off, right, we have a slight switch in order. We're going to start uh, with Zach Downey. Uh, Zach is an architect based in New York. He co founded Parabox, which is a technology firm focusing on exploiting emerging technology for the AEC industry. Uh, he's conducted workshops and lectures nationally on design technology and is also an adjunct professor at Columbia and New York City College of Technology. Uh, prior to founding Parabox, he was the director of the Applied Technology Group at South Park. And the title of his presentation um, is Closing Loops. Thanks. Uh, so this is um, a project that uh, I am a part of. Uh, this is not totally my project. Um, <coughs> it uh, actually is uh, involved with, uh, we have National Science Foundation grant um, and uh, a bunch of other parties involved. Uh, but this is primarily run through CUNY. Um, uh, and what we're trying to do is, is teach um, these students a kind of workflow around design um, that focuses primarily on these three kind of design um, or uh, aspects of, of construction or physical uh, uh, building. Um, and it's called, <coughs> the, the, the project is called The Loop because basically we're um, trying to simulate for the students um, a design workflow that uh, is somewhat similar to what they may experience in practice. Um, it's a bit convoluted uh, and, and uh, we're trying to kind of expose them to that uh, early on. So <coughs> we take them through three kind of major workflows of analysis, design, uh, and fabrication, and then the loops back between all of these different uh, aspects as we move forward. Uh, and, and we'll talk about a little bit of that. Um, so I, I'm just a small part of this. Um, Brian Ringley, who's also here uh, from CUNY, uh, is involved in, in Arpon, who did not make it back from lunch yet. Which is, uh, it's a good sign because all your questions go to him. Uh, <laughs> we won't have to worry about it uh, at the end. Uh, but anyway, it's a big team. Um, it primarily focuses on three kind of classes uh, of, of students. Um, there's the building information modeling class, there's uh, computation fabrication, which is the one I'm involved in, um, and the one that we're primarily using Diva, so we'll probably be talking about that a little bit more. Um, and then the building performance and energy modeling. And there's a lot of interplay between the two of us as far as analysis uh, and design goes. This is kind of an <coughs> overall schedule of uh, what we're doing uh, and some of the steps. And again, this is a big... Uh, um, a broad range, and because this is a loop process where we're constantly going back and iterating, at any given point we may be here versus here, uh, so uh, we're kind of all over the place as far as where we are in the, in the overall scheme of the project. Um, just to give you a, a kind of overall of what we're doing as far as the uh, amount of looping and uh, weaving between different programs and how the information flows. is. We are, this is kind of just an overview of some of the, uh, some of the information passing between different uh, softwares uh, and some of, the, some of the tools that we're using. Uh, Diva makes its way in there in the uh, kind of third step as far as the uh, uh, facade, uh, initial facade goes and then the <coughs> later on in the daylighting simulation which we'll talk about as we go forward. Um, so just to uh, <coughs> give a sense of what we're asking the students to do as far as uh, move data between these different softwares and, and kind of be savvy enough, at least uh, more than us, as far as how this information gets passed uh, between different uh, um, softwares. And also, to some steps that we are projecting, uh, but we're not quite there yet in the, in the whole process. And, and this, this project will be repeated next semester and hopefully the semester after that, so we'll we'll kind of fine tune the workflow as we go. But uh, we have fabrication and field testing, which will be ongoing. Uh, but right now, we're sort of stuck in the middle. Uh, but because this is a Diva uh, situa uh, conference, I wanted to talk about how we're using Diva uh, in the process, along with some of the geometry issues and some of the things we're, we're coming up against. Um, 
one of the things which is we're, we're trying to teach uh, the students and, and um, also the, the general community as well is we've started a few uh, course websites for uh, intro to comp competition fabrication and a few other things as well as um, some outside resources where we're putting all these tutorials out uh, for anyone to, to kind of take a look at or critique or tell us that we're doing it wrong. Um, so th these are kind of resources that we're using internally for the students, uh, but we're also kind of giving it, giving it back as well. Um, I, I just realized that I didn't include a slide of the existing building, and that's good for you guys because it's almost defensively ugly. Um, so we can just talk about the kind of general condition. It's, it's a small building on the CUNY campus uh, just off the uh, Brooklyn Bridge um, uh, on-ramp. Uh, so it's sandwiched in a really nice spot. But uh, we have a couple of base conditions that we were setting up. <clears throat> Basically, the existing building is a brick building with punched openings. Um, and we're looking to redesign that facade with a couple of base case options. Um, but the goal is that the students would, would make an intervention into that existing space to bring in more daylight um, and also give it a little bit of architectural interest uh, above and beyond what it currently has. So we're doing a couple of uh, just like a freeform facade analysis and running irradiance in uh, Diva. Um, we've created a, a couple of custom spreadsheets uh, that takes the, the user input, uh, export information from Diva, and gives us a rough idea of the thermal uh, uh, transmission through the curtain wall. And we're looking at a couple of base case scenarios. We're, right now, we're kind of still tweaking this. There probably are going to be some numbers that we see later that look ridiculous, um, and they most likely are ridiculous. Um, and I think that's because we're, we're still kind of tweaking how all these things are, are working out. Uh, but the goal is that we have this kind of spreadsheet at the end uh, that's interactive with our grasshopper models uh, that we can validate as we, as we toy with the, with the designs. Um, and one of the ways that we're doing it is we created a, a custom node uh, that's full of a bunch of C-sharp C script uh, under the hood that is doing some of these calculations, a very specific calculation in this case, uh, for us as we go. Um, this is looking at uh, some direct input from Diva. This is solar radiation values coming directly in, uh, taking the wall and glass surface areas combining that with the solar heat gain coefficient to get a few different metrics that we're uh, uh, able to kind of look at quickly. Um, as far as the project goes and what we're asking the students to do is we have a panelized system and, and also show some of the panelizations uh, in a minute. Um, but the students uh, would be asked to create a, a responsive facade component. Uh, not movable, not adaptive, but a responsive in the design process that then is a fixed uh, parametric uh, application. Uh, all to be made out of, uh, in this case, um, some sort of sheet material. We're probably looking at uh, aluminum uh, for this case. And this is a shading device that uh, the BIM technology class is going to look at its connections back to the building. So we're, we're passing all this information between all these classes. Um, but in our case, we were looking at uh, one initial variable to begin to create these responsive panels. Um, and we were looking at uh, solar radiation as our uh, driver for the geometry. So um, in a, a very broad sense, we said, OK, if, the, if, there, if based on the surface geometry that you're creating, um, if you are getting a low irradiance value, you're uh, how, how does your surface respond to that? If you're getting a lot of irradiation, how do you respond to that? So uh, in general, uh, we were looking at more open panels to let in more uh, of not only heat, but daylight uh, in, in areas where there's low and to block it uh, in some cases where, it, where it's high. And so, so these are four of the variations uh, that the class was, was doing. Uh, these are some of the base design surfaces. So in Grasshopper, they can parametrically control these surfaces and the panelizations of them as well so that we can quickly uh, iterate through different design options uh, as well as for the underlying surface that they're controlling and also their panel, uh, their specific panels. So these would be the panelizations and sort of the radiation uh, analysis uh, of these. These are um, currently 
sort of curvy morphed surfaces. The actually, if I go back, the surfaces that were actually um, uh, applying the the uh, panels onto our, our planarized surfaces. So we would actually uh, we we're trying to have a discussion about which uh, you know how we ta we're taking that value, um, whether or not we're just taking an area centroid as the the normal vector for the irradiance, or are we panelizing? In that case, it's not as big a deal. Um, and so there are a couple of, of options we were working through as far as that goes. Um, this is the uh, our, our DIVA simulation settings. <laughs> Uh, that we, we had the students run. Uh, these are a couple of uh, examples of, of the uh, results of those. So in this case, we have a triangulated uh, two, two triangles per surface. So there was an average that was happening between the irradiance of both of those triangles because they're, they're different. Um, and so that was what was driving the uh, openings of these facade pieces. Uh, again, another example using uh, with the analysis grid uh, well, the curved analysis grid shaded, and the uh, the actual geometry. <coughs> so, we're in areas where we have uh, more red, in this case, we're we're closing those those apertures up. Uh, another example, and then a kind of large uh, large scale example. Um, so, again, this is uh, looking at how we sample those surfaces. Uh, you know, one ve vector per panel, um, an average uh, situation, or do we m do multiple samples per uh, panel? Uh, and it, it depended on whether or not there is a um, a planarized surface in the background, or in this case, uh, the top case is a more curved uh, surface. So we were looking at um, how we do those samples. You know, is there a, a mean? Is there the surface centroid or uh, looking at the worst case per per subdivision pan. Um, so we started to then take those shading elements back into uh, back into the loop of analysis. So that was the sort of design portion in the in the middle. Um, and we're looking now we're looking at some of the daylighting and energy from those. Um, we started looking at bringing these back into Vasari um, using a couple of, uh, of apps created by Case. Um, this had a little bit of a uh, limitation in that Vasari has a geometry uh, limitation of about 10, 24 faces. Um, so we would have to do things like dumb it down um, and uh, to, to sort of simplify the geometry in a way that Vasari could handle it. So we were having some issues in that regard. Um, I think this is, yeah, showing the, the screenshot of Vasari's error uh, regarding our <laughs> complexity of geometry. Um, Again, these are uh, Vasari. Uh, these are yeah, these are energy. Uh, so what we're doing now is uh, doing doing these calculations on our own using Diva's values instead of uh, kind of importing this in. So we would we, we came up with and again this is where uh, Harpon's here yet yeah can answer your questions about the math behind it. Uh, I I can answer your questions about the coding of it. Um, so this, these are kind of breakdowns of uh, what we're looking at as far as um, Asari goes, uh, and these are the uh, yeah these are the Asari analysis of the entire uh, building. Um, again, optimized for Diva. There's really not a whole lot of optimization. It's uh, you know triangulated faces in our case, uh, but for Open Studio and Energy Plus, we have a few modifications to be made uh, for for gaps and things like that. Uh, these were uh, case studies of energy uh, through each of those buildings with our screens. The intention now is to rerun these simulations uh, by tweaking the, the, the screen geometry or the underlying uh, surface geometry um, and building in a workflow that is fairly adaptive at doing this. Uh, right now this is um, a still pretty uh, export-import intensive workflow um, and so we're working to uh, minimize that as much as possible by doing some uh, calculations on the fly in Grasshopper. Um, these are yeah, comparison studies of the uh, existing building, the pure glass facade, if we were to basically blow the whole side of the existing building away and do a traditional glass facade, 
and then with each of these four students is uh, four students shading uh, options. Um, so again, we're we're looking to um, improve the workflow by doing these uh, calculated fields on the fly in our, in our grasshopper uh, table. And so th some of these are some of the results of that initial export. Uh, we were working with some uh, not great assumptions at the beginning, and this slide's a little old, but uh, we're currently in the process of redoing this, but you know we have a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.7. We should have been using about 0.4. Um, and there were a few, uh, because we we're doing, <laughs> doing this with students, we had to kind of uh, hammer on the fact that units are sort of important. Uh, so there were initially, and, I, and I, I don't know if this slide represents it, but there were initially some inches versus meters situations going on. And uh, we were checking one of the buildings, and I, I was like, this should, I don't know what's going wrong with this. And then I realized that the building was about 46 inches high. <laughs> um, so we were getting <coughs> glazing areas that weren't quite right. Um, and uh, yeah, so right now we're, we're throwing these designs into some benchmarking standards. Uh, for uh, typical uh, code minimums and things like that. Um, and we're just now beginning to look at uh, daylighting. Um, we haven't gotten there quite yet. We did an initial analysis with bringing, once we did the, the screen design uh, based on solar irradiation, uh, we brought the screens back in, and now we're looking at daylighting on the work plane uh, on a typical floor in the building. Um, and we have a few examples of, of that that process, but we're not quite there as far as their student models yet. We have some um, uh, models from, oh yeah, these are the DEVA calculations, but they're not quite uh, fixed yet because we have to go back in and modify their screen designs based on new adaption. Um, this may be a video. Um, one of the things that we, oh yeah, yeah, go ahead and click it. Um, one of the things we were looking at as far as enabling the students to visualize these these daylights uh, better. This is kind of a, a shoebox model. Um, running, um, in this case, the spring equinox at every um, 15 minutes from about 5 in the morning till 9 at night uh, in New York, looking at uh, a couple of different ways of visualizing the daylighting within the space. And so hopefully this, as a teaching tool, will be able to show them uh, what to kind of expect. Um, this was done using... Um, a custom script uh, that generates the batch file for you, so you can uh, set up your parameters, run one Diva simulation in Grasshopper, uh, and then basically run this Python script to uh, set up a whole other set of batch files that can run, uh, and you can go grab a coffee, uh, and then come back and then load these results back into Grasshopper. So I think maybe the next slide will show that. Maybe. Maybe I have to hit. Yeah, thanks. Maybe not. Videos and PDFs are always fun, right? Um, yeah, I would click over here maybe and see if that changes the, uh, the slide. Yeah, that may do it. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so this is this is the uh, visualization workflow. Just, so just to show the setup of the sandbox, there is a you know four walls, a typical material, and then a typical uh, window setup that can be adjusted parametrically. Uh, what what you're looking at here is these are the list of bat files, or sorry, uh, dat files that were generated from the batch um, that can then be cycled through. So you can look at any 15 minute increment throughout this day and um, <coughs> dial in a specific uh, visualization for that data. So in this case, I think there's uh, that's a colored mesh and switching a few uh, visualization options to show what it looks like as a, as a, a, a 3D mesh um, that is elevated based on the amount of daylight um, on a particular uh, section of the floor. Um, yeah, so again, all we're doing is after the, the files are run, then you're kind of just cycling through these, these data files, uh, and then it's rereading this information in from the data file, doing a LUX calculation, um, 
to, to show those values. So what we're seeing in this case is uh, the, the LUX values. Let's see if this may have to get you to hit the next button again. Um, Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of the same. Um, oh, actually, I think we have to go back one. Can you go back one? <laughs> Went too far. Uh, one more. I think it's going to keep running. Anyway, this is... Uh, I'll talk about that when we get there. Um, <laughs> it doesn't want to go back. Go down to the bottom. I thought that was PowerPoint. Oh, yeah, sorry, PDF. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that may be it. Uh, okay, yeah, this is the one. Um, so, also to show that some of the other visualization methods is we actually have, a little hard to see here, but they're the, the LUX values are written on point uh, as well, so um, you can see a bit more information than just the kind of uh, colored. Uh, diagram, and again, because we're reading, rereading those those data files in, uh, we can um, there are at least validated Diva simulations of the surface um, with the actual flux values on them on those sample points. Um, also, uh, in this case, contour mesh, uh, which is uh, kind of hacked together contour mesh, to be honest, but. Um, Nevertheless, a, a way for the students to kind of visualize what's going on uh, from a daylighting standpoint inside the building. And again, this is just a test case, but we're looking to apply that to their custom facades as well. Um, but each one of these nodes has their uh, values um, straight from the, the Diva uh, DAT files. Okay, let's see if I can rerun that. Oh, this is the mouse. Uh, I was not aware of that. I don't know how to restart the video in PDF. Some technology firm we are. Um, anyway, what's showing here um, that is not really that important to, to see in the video, but this is a, a, the typical um, bat file uh, coming from uh, Diva after a single simulation. Um, what this script does is it generates, uh, based on some user input, uh, it takes the information from the uh, s the initial weather file, uh, the sky radiance file uh, for uh, basically this portion of the setup, um, and then it recalculates based on you know what your settings are, your time steps, uh, reproduces this uh, generative sky uh, based on the time steps that you set up, um, and reconfigures a brand new bat file with you know all of those time increments set up so that you can run that, um, go away from it. Uh, it cr creates a folder structure uh, with all of these uh, dat files saved in a separate location, actually in the Diva dat file folder anyway. Um, and then these are what gets re-referenced in for the uh, visualizations. You can scrub through those results and see what's going on. And I think, let me just move this guy. Maybe you have to do it. Oh wait, can you go back one? <laughs> uh, yeah, now I'll click in here and let's see if that <laughs> runs. Okay, so the other tool that was created is a, a, a adapt to Excel script. So basically, uh, we have these. Uh, now you have a, a ton of data files that you can scrub through in uh, Rhino, but there may be a use for them in uh, Excel as well. So this script um, takes this kind of typical data file information um, and runs uh, a, just a basic script to parse through those uh, values. In this case, it's their illuminance. Uh, so they're, they do the calculation on the radiance files to um, combine them into one single workbook, each file separated by a uh, sheet, um, and does the calculations for the LUX. So the fourth column that you're seeing there are the uh, LUX calculations. So all the files get um, kind of instantly um, 
placed into an Excel script, that when, I mean, Excel file that you can then do whatever it is you do as, as far as the number crunching goes, uh, which is more uh, Arpon's uh, realm of expertise than mine. Um, but uh, the plan is these, these tools are still a bit rough, um, and I'm sure there's a few bugs that need to be worked out since I, I only started them last week. But I plan on uh, kind of putting them out there. Oh, there's a video in front of the. <laughs> I plan on putting them out uh, on one of these two locations for uh, everyone else to kind of pick apart and, and uh, help out, or potentially uh, open sourcing them on, on our GitHub account. Um, but eventually I'll, I'll uh, release those fairly soon if, if anyone's interested. Um, and uh, that's, that's it. <laughs> so. That. Please, know, please know Adobe uh, video question. So, <laughs> how much uh, experience did the students have with Grasshopper before entering this class? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, not a lot, right, Brian? I think they were zero. Yeah, it was zero. So we 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 ramped them up from uh, zero to diva in uh, in uh, I guess it was probably uh, a month or two, three, ten to fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, were, it's were they doing it's not like C sharp plus or Bell? Are you doing that for them, or did they get involved? In the we started a uh, scripting module for them. Um, they hated it. <laughs> um, teaching code to uh, uh, students who are interested in design is is, uh, is always a challenge. Uh, I tried to, and, and they're a lot younger than me, so I was trying to. Uh, show them that these exact same coding techniques are used to create Xbox 360 games. <laughs> they weren't buying it, but anyway. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, they have exposure to C-sharp. Those scripts were done uh, by, by me, but um, at least they can get in and know a little bit about what's going on. So, uh, but yeah, it was, definitely, uh, it was definitely a challenge. I think they were getting a little irritated with the uh, the, the zero to diva in uh, you know that short of period. Um, Would you mind backing up one slide? Sure. <laughs> Maybe. <Thank you. laughs> no promises. Uh, yeah. So this is a tutorial uh, website um, with uh, a terrible name, but all the tutorials are free. Um, and then um, yeah, that's my company. Anyway. Shameless plug. Another question. Uh, yeah, which level? Um, what level was the student? Uh, sequence? Good question. They're um, they're undergrad. Uh, probably most of them are about third year, I think. Um, and uh, they're doing a bachelor's of technology degree. If you have a comment or a trick, what you can do because you use Eva to radiation maps to build a form your facade. But if you want to know what the energy impact is, and the problem with energy plus you can't handle the surfaces, there's this version from the Daniel Jones that's not touching mm -hmm. that can do it. So, what uh, other the Omifa has done, for example, in one study, you can use uh, a plane of sensors facing out and then you do the simulation twice without the shading device and with the shading device and then the ratio between the two of them is your solar heat gain coefficient. Ah, right. And you can do that for every hour of the year and then you can use the solar heat gain coefficient profile and feed it into energy. I may have to email you for that. So, <laughs> and it's, it's described in this paper building simulation, maybe uh, up, uh, that's one way of doing it. Yeah. And that works pretty well. Right? Okay. Yeah, no problem.